All right, let's put it. It's Wednesday evening. It's weather for weather geeks time. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff to talk about this evening. No big major winter weather threats, that is for sure. But we do actually have some fairly typical midwinter weather coming our way, albeit fairly briefly over the next few days. First of all, a little uh, statistical run through this evening. You know, there's a million different ways uh, that we could uh, talk about the lack of cold in a general sense in our winters of late. Thanks to Ralph and Canfield for putting together uh, this uh, s uh, set of statistics, kind of crunching all the numbers. It took a little while, but going through all the winters dating back to a couple of cold ones about a decade ago, 2013 and 2014, uh, the percentage of days in which the average temperature for a given date in winter, December, January, February, was at or above average. Um, so you can see the trend here. You know, after a couple of pretty cold winters here, more than half of our days, and in some winters, way more than half of our days, ha have been warmer at or warmer than average, I should say, during the uh, winter season. With one exception, we had a very typical winter back in 2017, 2018. That winter finished very close to the average. But of course, uh, recent winters have all been fairly mild, including last winter. And while this year is not listed yet because the season is not over yet, we could see where you know we're going to finish meteorological winter with about 78-ish percent of our days during the winter season being above, at or above, I should say, the seasonal average. And when we talk about these individual days, we're combining highs and lows here. It's not just the high temperatures for the day, the low temperatures for the day, but it's the combo of the two. And even today, that you know, it was a pretty chilly day today, but our average temperature, it's going to go into the record books as probably in the upper 20s to around 30 when you factor in today's low, today's high, and that still is above the average by just a little bit. Although it's cooling off pretty quickly this evening. It's possible that our uh, temperature by midnight tonight gets well down into the 20s and that could skew today's numbers just a little bit. But yeah, bottom line, of course, it's been a warm winter and another way to look at how warm it's been, look at the Lake Erie ice coverage. Zero, a goose egg on Lake Erie right now as far as ice coverage and we are climatologically speaking now at our peak at least on Lake Erie. Now for the Great Lakes as a whole, there's a plateau from about mid-February to about the first week of March. That's kind of the true peak. But for Lake Erie in particular, we tend to peak right around Valentine's Day, right around mid-February uh, with a you know, a peak as far as the long-term averages, somewhere around 70 to 75 percent. But right now we have a goose egg. We peaked at about 40 percent during that one stretch of cold weather in January. It lasted about 10 days. That's really been our only sustained cold stretch of the entire winter season. Here's a look at the Great Lakes as a whole. The ice coverage on all of the Great Lakes, 3%. That is a record for this deep into the season. Nothing on Lake Erie, essentially nothing on Lake Ontario with the exception of some of the shallower waters, but Lake Ontario is the deepest uh, Great Lake, so it's a uh, you know, it's pretty common for there to be more open water on that lake, but Erie is the most shallow Great Lake, and it's pretty unusual, of course, to have absolutely nothing here in mid-February. There's basically nothing on the extent of Lake Michigan, with the exception of some of the shallower bays and inlets. Same idea for the rest of the Great Lakes as well. So it's just another way of showing just how lame this winter has been. In the meantime, it was uh, nice and clear this afternoon ju just to our east, and you can get a good look at the uh, snow footprint from the storm that rolled through the mid-Atlantic states yesterday. Really sharp cutoff, of course, between snow and no snow on both the northern and southern edges of this, but they did well in eastern PA, parts of northern and central New Jersey. Uh, New York City had a few inches, which, you know, is not a real big number, but when you consider New York City hasn't had that much snow in over a couple of years, it was a pretty big event for them. And here's a look at the actual totals. You know, there was a lollipop here of of uh, some double-digit amounts in far northeastern PA, northwestern New Jersey, across the Hudson Valley, and over into the Connecticut River Valley as well. But all of that, of course, was a miss, and if you missed my commentary on this last evening, this was one of the more remarkable uh, storm track shifts at the last minute uh, that I've seen in recent memory, and it basically meant we got, of course, nothing around here. What a nice sunset we had this evening. Uh, the clouds hung on a little bit longer than expected this afternoon, but they cleared out just in time for sunset this evening. It was a real winter out there uh, this evening. And of course, we have a milestone coming up when it comes to our sunsets in just a handful of days, less than a week from now. On February the 19th, our sunset that evening actually will be 6.01. The previous evening, at least at Youngstown, officially on the 18th, it's at 5.59. So we skip an exact six o'clock sunset this year in Youngstown anyway. Of course, there's always a little variation depending on how far east or west you are. Uh, but all these numbers are, of course, valid for Youngstown. And uh, just in a couple of weeks, two weeks from today, actually, uh, our sunrises get back to 7 a.m. 
at the start of the day at the very end of February. All right, Valentine's Day today and doing a little snuggling in the sky this evening. Uh, this will be real vivid up there. Uh, Jupiter and the moon. Crescent moon up there tonight and you know there's less than a degree or so of separation between these two objects in our sky tonight. This is the western sky this evening. You want to check this out before they set uh, around midnight-ish. Um, so over the next few hours, bundle up. It's turning pretty chilly out there with that crystal clear sky. Ahead of our weather maker tomorrow, cold front heading our way. The weather service office in Cleveland did hoist wind advisories for some of their counties today, and this is mostly around and west of I-71 and also right along the lakeshore in northeast Ohio and into northwest PA as well. No wind advisory for our television market. The wind gusts will be noticeable tomorrow, but they won't be advisory level high around here. This is just one model depiction, but I could see where we get a 35 or 40 mile per hour gust on occasion, especially as we get into the afternoon and early evening on our Thursday. This will be with our cold front rolling through, and it will also come with some rain showers as well. Now, the rain in any one location is not going to last very long. You'll get a half an hour to 45 minutes worth of rain. Most of us get this right around 2 o'clock, uh, give or take a half an hour or so. So early to mid-afternoon, then in the wake of our front, temperatures drop fairly quickly towards evening setting the stage for a passing flurry or two late in the evening into the overnight. And then we're going to keep an eye on this uh, emerging system out to our west. This is kind of a clipper type system, fast moving area of low pressure, fairly weak, fairly flat. And this particular model depiction keeps uh, most, if not all, of the snow to our south. But there are some models that have it a little farther to, nor to the uh, north, I should say. It'll be kind of a close call. I, I guess I wouldn't be surprised at this point if we got grazed by at least a little bit of snow. Friday evening into the overnight, and I think the best chances for that will be south of I-80 and even south of 224. Uh, once you're down towards I-70 and especially down towards Charleston, Morgantown, into Kentucky, yeah, there's probably going to be some accumulating snow down there. That system then heads east, and we're left with blustery cold weather to kick off the upcoming weekend. Here's one model depiction of the uh, snow with that clipper system. You know, it's possible that there's a decent amount of snow in parts of Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, and maybe even uh, some fresh accumulations over towards Baltimore and Washington. Around here, odds favor little accumulation, maybe even none, but if we get some, it's probably less than a couple of inches in most of our area. And again, our southern areas would be favored with that Friday night. Snow or no snow, it's going to be cold on Saturday. In fact, this will be the coldest day in about a, almost a month. Um, the air temperature Saturday, not much better than upper 20s to around 30. And as you can see, the wind chill probably not much better than the middle and upper teens on Saturday. It's going to feel like winter for a change, but of course that will uh, not last long. We've got big changes coming our way next week with the uh, warmth definitely returning. Uh, I think we're going to see 50 at least once or twice next week. All right, with a fairly lame <laughs> pattern coming up as we go through the... Uh, second half of February and round out meteorological winter. Let's uh, actually look at um, some, let's have a little discussion about March here. I put this on uh, Twitter this afternoon, in case you don't follow me there, um, Eric WFMJ on Twitter, talking a little bit about uh, possibilities during the month of March. Uh, here's a look at the European extended, sometimes you see us refer to them as the European weeklies. Um, basically the March temperature forecast here, warmer than average temperatures favored around the Great Lakes and Northeast, colder than average, Intermountain West, maybe parts of the South as well. Now that's model data. When you uh, look at what we uh, are looking at as far as the analogs for March, and basically we look back at all the moderate to very strong El Ninos for the winter season. Typically they're decaying as you get into March, but it's still an El Nino. And what does that analog set look like when you combine 1958, 66, 73, 88, 92, 83, 98, and 2016? You get a map that looks like this. It looks very similar, actually, to that model I just showed you. So that gives us some confidence that that may be the uh, right idea. There's one year in particular that I think is 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 better out of that set, and that's 1973. I won't get too deep into the reasons why, but I, I favor 1973 at the top of my list for current analogs to our to our season and heading into spring. Now, in 1973, we had a very warm month of March. Now, we did have a pretty sizable snowstorm in the middle of the month, but, of course, the snow was, was not on the ground for very long. It was a warm March of 1973. So that's my current favorite analog. That doesn't mean we're going to have a repeat of 1973. But uh, at this point, on February 14th, I guess I wouldn't be shocked. As far as precipitation goes, again, model data. This is the European extended uh, precipitation for uh, March compared to average. Wetter than average favored on a lot of places east of the uh, Rockies. 
Um, and that is supported some by some of the analogs as well. Maybe not as strongly supported as the temperature outlook, but yeah, just a little fun with the longer range. Don't take any of that to the bank, but it's a little speculation on what we can expect as we kick off meteorological spring coming up in just a little more than two weeks. All right, we went a little long tonight. Thanks for hanging with me and watching Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll see you right back here on Thursday.